to our video on trigonometry or trig identities I'll say. A trig identity is just um, basically an equation that relates an, a function in trigonometry and we have already described three of these um, sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle. We've said that the sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse and the cosine equals, remember our this is our acronym, the guiding acronym, so KTOA, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Or, as we said in other videos, that's really just the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So, so what if we had a right triangle and we wanted to find out the hypotenuse over the opposite. What would that be? Well, the hypotenuse over the opposite would have to be um, what's called the cosecant. So the cosecant is, it's you can think of it as 1 over the sine of theta, which is really um, 1 over the opposite over the hypotenuse. 1 divided by the opposite over the hypotenuse is 1 times the hypotenuse over the opposite, which equals hypotenuse over opposite. And that's cosecant you can't usually see as this. And then there is the secant. The secant is just the inverse of the cosine, which is just the hypotenuse over the adjacent, for the same reason that um, the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. The same process works for the secant, and we usually just think of the secant as 1 over the cosine of theta. And then lastly we have the inverse, sorry, the reciprocal of the tangent, which is um, 1 over the tangent of theta, or 1 over the opposite over the adjacent, which is just the adjacent over the opposite. And if I'm, if I'm confusing you here about the 1 over part. Think about it this way. If you had 1 divided by the uh, opposite over the adjacent, you might remember that when we divide fractions, we end up multiplying the reciprocal. So here, it's, if it's 1 over the uh, opposite over adjacent, which is the tangent, that would be 1 times the adjacent over the opposite. And that's just the adjacent over the opposite because one times anything is just itself. <clears throat> and that's what's happening in all of these cases. For secant and, and cosecant, and, and in this case, this is called the cotangent of theta. And actually, I, I think, I mean, we have a mnemonic device. We have Sokotoa to remember our first three um, trick identities here, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, but for me, I guess, I'm not usually the kind of person to try and memorize anything but somehow it stuck for me that the um, the cosine is not the reciprocal of the cosecant. And the reason I think I was able to remember that is because of somehow I remember this S matches the sine. And for secant, I thought of it as somewhat like a trick, how the S for secant um, is not for sine, right? It seems that way because the S is there, but the secant is really for the cosine and the cosecant is really for the sign. And I, I wish that they hadn't called <laughs> these um, reciprocals by these names. It's very hard for me, at least, to be in the beginning to remember. But if you can get it down, if you can find a way to remember this, uh, I think it would be okay. Now, now we'll talk about what these are really, what are the implications of having these reciprocals, and um, what do they look like in graphs and other videos. But here we just have these identities, these equations that relate trig identities to parts of the right triangle. And there's so many trig identities, but what's really cool is that we don't have to memorize them. That's what we have to do is um, we use this word a lot in our class, which is we would tinker around with the equations, multiply, divide, do all this stuff to see what happens. And one of my favorite connections once we start tinkering is with the Pythagorean theorem. Now this one I think is quite remarkable, um, and I'm pretty sure you might have, if if you're studying tri trigonometry already. I'm sure you've seen this one, but let's look at where this comes from. Uh, the idea is that in a triangle, 
you have uh, the hypotenuse, and let's say our theta is right here. If, that, if that's the theta, then this is our adjacent, and this is our hypotenuse. So the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But we are going to write that as the adjacent side squared plus the, I wrote hypotenuse twice, this should be the opposite side, plus the opposite side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And now we're going into our trig identity language. You can see it already. What if I divide everything by the hypotenuse squared? What happens then? Well, the hypotenuse squared divided by itself, what's that? Well, that's just 1, right? Something divided by itself is 1. And we can rewrite these over here as the adjacent over, I'm going to write h for hypotenuse, squared, like that, plus the opposite over the hypotenuse squared. That equals 1. Well, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, what's that? That Think of our acronym, SOHCAHTOA. That's the cosine. So the cosine of theta squared, and this opposite over the hypotenuse, what's that? That's that's sine, so sine of theta squared equals 1. And there is that equation that comes up so frequently. And you might even see it written like this, the cosine squared like that, plus the sine squared of theta equals 1. And isn't that interesting that that, that comes from a connection to the Pythagorean theorem? So there's no need to memorize that, but if you, if you play around with these things enough, you're going to get a bunch of these identities. And in the next video, we'll look at some more. Um, we're not going to look at all of them, but we definitely are going to mess around with these to get some interesting ones uh, kind of written out to see what they look like and where they come from.